What am I? My name is uh, Alfred Smallwood. I'm known as Uncle Alfred uh, in the Townsville. I'm a traditional owner with the Bindle clan group here. And I'm also a, um, a board member with the Townsville Community Justice Group. And both myself and Uncle Brad Hanaway are, are elders in the courts, the Community Justice Group courts. And I'd, um, last year I'd just finished doing, I was a sole visitor for 10 years. Um, going into the watch house and with my men's group we deal with a lot of uh, lot of, lot of offend, uh, offenders going through the court system thank you thank you okay uh, my name is Bradley Henaway um, <clears throat> my origin is uh, from the birdie kid uh, my grandma was a juru lady and my granddad came from Vanuatu uh, from the boats um, been living in Townsville for the last 30 years and involved with men's stuff and I teach the principles of red dust healing to our men and women here. And all right? Please proceed, gentlemen. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Look, um, I, I, I'm usually a visual person but I do stuff on the whiteboard and one of my first things about um, before I talk to anybody I like to talk to them about my relationship. My relationship uh, stems to five things that I carry with me every day. And my relation relationship is all about respect, honesty, trust, and truth. If one of these things are missing out of my relationship with you in this group, in this room here right now, I'm telling lies to myself and I'm telling lies to you. So I'd rather not tell you anything if there was something missing out of that, out of my five things. Um, and listening to Uncle Russell and uh, Wayne, everything that they're doing with Yinda, I've done the same thing, or I'm still doing the same thing. But the big difference is there, is I do it for nothing. Been doing this for many, many years, even this men's group. Um, and I think that's where I'm, I'm more concerned now after in the, in, the, in the Murray Court here in Townsville and in the High Risk Court, I'd like to find out who the cultural mentors are that are going through High Court. Because as far as I know, there's only Yinda. There's big funding out there that's already been allocated to mainstream organisations and I want to know who the cultural mentors are. And what do we perceive as the word culture? I put all this down on dot point, as I said, I'm a, I'm a visual person. And, uh, you know, if we're gonna say we're gonna do cultural mentoring, what is culture? I can't teach nobody, I can't teach nobody Aboriginal culture because I don't know it. It was never taught to me. It was never caught, taught to me about culture. And if you look at our young people today with their culture, if I knew anything about rap or the American gangster stuff, I could be able to teach you their culture that they know today. That's all they know. <laughs> We've got to be serious when we talk about being cultural mentors. I do a lot of, I do a lot of cultural um, things with Uncle Russell who was here this morning. Um, so the two of us work together culturally out in the bush and out in the salt water. But uh, I was never taught that stuff. I had to learn it myself because our parents weren't allowed to teach us, uh, as people in this room probably know that. So I'd like to know what, um, what the word, when you apply for funding, if you're going to say you're going to be doing cultural mentoring, what's that wording for that culture? Are you going to be teaching these kids how to be gangsters? That's the kind of culture they know? Or rap music or rap singing? Look at our young people. They know nothing about culture. Well, I'd like to know what it is anyway myself. Um, and it's the, um, you know, the cultural mentors, who are they? A lot of the men's groups that come, with our men's group, look, we have between 20 and 30 every Tuesday night that's run voluntary. And most of them are all, uh, a lot of them are all ex-prisoners, ex-offenders, I should say. <laughs> And as um, Mr. Glasgow spoke about the newspapers, looking at youth crime, that's all we look at too also. Now these um, men now who are warriors from coming to the men's group, 
All as they say is uncle. We're now fathers again. We're now warriors. We need to help these young people. But they're not allowed to because of the blue card. And they're only and and their their offences are domestic violence. But they've gone through whatever the court systems told them to do. And as I, as I say, they're fathers now and they're, and they're warriors. They're the yesterday warrior again. So all is there, all is there busting at the seams for is to help these young people. But because of the blue card again. Um, and of course we spoke about the juvenile Murray court. Um, and I have, a, I have a story about the turtles. If you've got a bay, you got a bay and everybody in that in that bay is healthy, and you've got two or three turtles out, outside that bay that are sick, you've got to fix up that community first, where them turtle that bay first, before you let them sick turtles back in. Because the whole the whole the whole bay is gonna get affected. This is how I talk about when we're dealing with these families. We've got to get the families fixed first before we can fix these young people. Until the parents start learning respect within themselves, that's that relationship I talk about. If the parents have got no respect within themselves, how are these young people going to be knowing anything about respect? You ask any parent in this day and age now, oh, you know which, one, which parents I'm talking about, but the, in that age group, I meant for the youth that are in trouble now today. You ask them about their culture, what they know about their culture. They'll be the same as me and they'll say, don't know it. But then if you ask them if they can teach their kids about rapping or that whatever that thing is now, the culture they use today, they'll know all about that. I don't know it. For the simple reason, these parents aren't carrying respect within themselves. Till uh, the lady asked me today what I thought about the 500 young people getting questioned by the police last year in Mount Isa. I said, that, to me, that's only showing anger. The kids would only be angry with the police for, for doing that. The same as um, youth justice caseworkers. Anybody involved in that court, I notice that, uh, and as I talk about crime, alcohol and drugs and domestic violence, is not racist. I'm not a racist person because anybody's allowed to come to our men's group. Um, I, I tend to, when I, when I talk about white and blacky, I just say the word white and black straight out because if I say the big words, non-indigenous, as you've seen, I nearly went slow then when we started because I got dentures. <laughs> so I just say black and white. So what happens here is, you look at any black and white worker working with these young people, all it takes is a bit of compassion and love and you'll start getting respect from these young people. And especially up in the courthouse, I say to them, just go and love them up and hug them. We're not allowed to do that. Why? Take notice of us black people. We don't care who they are, if they're young kids, they're still our grandchildren. They are still our grandchildren. Just show them a bit of compassion and tell them that you care and you'll see the big difference in them. But uh, I can only talk for myself here, but, but this is how I am. And I, that's the respect I have. Um, and, our, and our barriers are still in jail today. <laughs> the, the people that... Um, When I say the barriers are still in jail, a lot of our, lot of our people, well, no, I won't say our people, black and white are in jail for crimes that they either didn't commit or that they've just, um, it's their way of freedom to get away, to go to jail, to go and get their feed. Um, it's hard, these are just stories that we hear at the men's group. That, um, that's why they want to go to jail because they got no job. They don't know how to how to they don't know how to be that protector, provider, role model within their family. Um, and it just it just um, it just annoys me when I hear about 
people saying they're cultural mentors. I've got an art room over there where I am now, and uh, um, there's a transition to success. From the Palaget government, they've given $28.4 million or $28.7 million over the next four years. Now we're working with these 12 young people weekly um, and we're doing it for nothing. Yet all these cultural mentors, I'd like to know what they're getting. And what are they teaching? Um, I have Gail Marber, who's the artist and um, she's the studio, she's the studio lady looking after the art room. Um, and of course, um, Uncle Brad, he is my right hand, right hand man. He's been with me since I started the men's group and doing the red dust, um, red dust stuff. But it's really, it's really hard if, if, if this community doesn't get together. Like even now, right now, we're probably sitting here now talking, there's a big meeting on today somewhere. And it's all these organizations that are probably getting funding to help with these youth. They're not here. Um, and yet, every Wednesday or Thursday, you'll see them up at that courthouse, all with their uniform on, all with their thing on this thing here. Oh, I work for so-and-so, so-and-so. Ask them what they do. I have, a th I have a thing about just talking straight out to people. I just don't like, I just don't like uh, lies. Um, and if people are honest with me, I, I'm honest with them. And, it's, uh, and I think that's just what annoys me. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, Thank you. So is it important to talk about... Your workshop is about transitioning and to some positive stuff. Well, last night in the men's meeting, we have a lot of men, even the one in the justice group that we look after the courts. And many of the men that are there for domestic violence are actually turning things around and going back to their partners. So that's what we're trying to target in the sense of to break down some of the initial laws that separate them when they've got children in between and because they can't negotiate or talk in between and that divides them and so many of our men have to run off or go and live somewhere else or and it just puts a lot of stress on our men while we're trying to address their issues and some of that is um, <clears throat> is um, what we've seen over the last maybe three months or four months some of the men are actually turning their relationships around and they're actually beginning to get on and because of the very thing that uncle's talking about he talks about that father's role so that father's role when our men start to focus on bringing back that's a foundation in a person's life and that man starts to look at bringing back that father's role one of those roles is what they're catching on is now is initiate because he's the lawmaker he's an initiator so he has to initiate and bring back that relationship back into an important place where he can negotiate with his children, especially, even if he can't mend the relationship with that lady. And most of these men are actually desiring to do that. And they talked last night and they said, they, and all they wanted to talk about was all of their relationships. So, you know, you, before we used to talk about other stuff, but today, they were, last night, they were talking about the nitty gritty stuff. How do they deal with whatever in their relationship? And you can see many of the men, like some of the men are coming out of, they're out of prison and they're trying to form that relationship again. And so this one talked about, well, he sees now the mistakes that he's made before. And now he realises that he's got to take one day at a time in just rebuilding that relationship. It's not just about hanging it on sex. It's about all those other ingredients that are important to
to a man because he, he he's the foundation builder. Okay? And so that's part of some of the turnaround that we're seeing in our men. Uh, many of them, we still wonder, when was it, two or three months ago, we were thinking, are, this, are we getting home with these guys? But all of a sudden, they're coming out and you're starting to see the changes they're making in their own relationship. Even if they're separated, they're actually trying to negotiate with their women and to rebuild that family structure again. If anything that's missing in our communities is to rebuild that family. And uh, especially with sometimes uh, some of the things that, that have happened in uh, Townsville here, we have had so many uh, funerals and suicides and other things with uh, little children being lost. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that awareness of a father figure starts to um, be implemented on their mindset so that that becomes the focus, not the issue of fighting the system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fredericks, question? Question? Thank you, Uncle Alfred and, and Bradley, for your presentation. Just wondering, in terms of the role your group plays and elders play, what would support you to do the work you do, to do that work um, keep doing the work and to extend on the work? Yeah, well, just like Uncle saying, some of that is, is the important thing is that we're not getting enough funding to actually put things in place. Yeah. Sometimes there's only a couple of us that are out there, but we haven't got the money to support one another in terms of producing other men that can take our place or take those roles on because we all need some sense of income to be able to support each other in terms of addressing the issues for our men and our women. And you spoke about the cultural mentors. How, how do you think that could be assessed in a better way, um, Uncle Alfred? Well, first of all, by finding out what the word culture means <clears throat> and who wants, who wants um, with the young people, what sort of culture do they want? Or I'd, I'd say, want the men's group to teach What's that, what's that culture that they want us to teach these young people? Um, you know, there's a lot of rappers in our men's group. So they want us to teach rap music, uh, rap. Um, I, and as Uncle Brad just said, with that funding, people are telling me to step down. I'm getting too old now. It's probably why I burnt my finger. You know, I can't take anybody out on country with me because no one's going to come out for nothing. And, you know, because they're going to want to get some kind of funding. Two of us have been doing this for 14 years, for nothing, with the men's group. You know, I've got, I've got stats in my bag there. And I showed some people some of my stats. And um, I, our office is over on Church of Christ there. And one of the brothers had a look at us. He took, it, took the stats away and he came back and he said, you know, in 2015, you saved the government 18 point something million dollars. I said, that's interesting. I said, I don't even get a cup of coffee out of these mob. Uh, you know, um, probation and parole, who, uh, you know, and people from the courts. Have you applied for funding? Is, are there uh, and out what there? I get told all the time is because I'm, I'm not a registered body or something. Okay. And I've got auspice bodies, um, but it seems to just go to the... Okay. Mainstream organisations that are up and running and nothing's working. And we have, as I said, we've been, only time I, only reason I started taking stats, you know, 14 years we've been running the men's group, but since 2012, uh, when Gail Marbo come on board with me, she said, Uncle, you got to start taking, doing stats. So from 2012, we've been, you know, getting them to sign in. Uh, yep sign in. So I've got all the stats here, but um, still, you know, and, and I tell people, say, can I look at your stats? I said, why do you want to look at my stats? And uh, I said, it's bad enough now. I'm getting people not taking any notice of me now, but yet you want my stats. Mm -hmm. Come on, tell me honestly why you want my stats. So you can go and get that stats and go and get funding. Get out of my sight. Uh, I just talk the truth. Um, 
So, and as I just said to you before, all these mainstream organisations that get all this funding, mm. not one of them offered us to any employment. Right. Not one of them. So. You talk about culture, and it sounds like you've gone on your own journey and acquired culture. How have you done that in the absence of you know, being taught it by, by parents? How have you acquired you know, your cultural knowledge? All right, I was a, I, I, I was, um, I was a lost uh, warrior myself. Were you? Yeah. Uh, four children, five children, 45, 43, 40, and twins at 37. Right. Now, I lost my role as a father when the twins were six weeks old. Mm. So that's when the alcohol and women overtook my life. Okay. And just the negativity, everything in my life was positive. Um, but then when I went on the other side of the fence, but it took me many, many years to get that respect back within myself. Yeah. I did not have respect within myself. I did not have respect for the community. I had respect for nobody. Right. And yet now I'm a elder in the courts. I'm, I got the um, 2016 and 17 uh, top 50 most influential person in Townsville. You know, I'm in that category. And I think to myself, now hang on, people would not have looked at me 20 years ago. <laughs> I said, but I, I found respect within myself. So that's my culture. I will always tell people, when they say, what's your culture? It's only one word, respect. And if, I, if I'm not carrying that respect, I've got no culture. So you've been there with some of these young blokes, are you? Oh, yeah. 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 And even all the men in the men's group, that's why I can relate to them, because yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Um, there was a look. There was a there was a young man, young two young brothers. Well, they're not young. They were. They come through Murray Court, and uh, they hit the drugs pretty heavy, and they done something very silly. And um, only Linda will know who I'm talking about. And uh, this young man come to men's group, and he just watched us up at the courthouse. So he said, he said to me, he said, I want to do what you're doing. He's uh, only in the early 20s. And he said, but I'm not an elder. I said, who said you're not an elder? I said, you're only, you're only taking on being an elder, you know, by your age. I said, you can be an elder here. So he seen what we were doing, so he took a court, uh, he took a, he did a course, uh, court course with, um, Youth justice as I'm working with kids. After that, he done that. He ended up uh, coming to um, Murray Court with us as an elder, and then from there he went on to be a CCC at the local high school. Excellent. And now he's working at the Cowboy House. Fantastic. You know, and this is just just a change around. There were these, um, you know, where these men. And that's I felt good about that because I was in the same spot as him. There's no doubt making a difference then, that sounds great. Oh, yeah. Could I ask about blue cards? It's come up multiple times. It, it, it's a real issue, the blue yeah. card situation. Just domestic violence stuff now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I have a, look, I have a strong belief in if mum and dad are arguing, that argument should be between them. It has nothing to do with the children. Uh, and with... Um, you know, people say to me, oh, they, they can work with you as long as they're with you. But I'm not everywhere 24 hours a day. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. These, these brothers, boy, they're up for minor offences, very minor offences. And, and I'm quite sure if, and I know myself anyway, Uncle Brad and myself would not let anybody, any young people be in danger yeah. of having anything to do with any of the brothers from men's group, if, you know. Yeah. But um, until that happens, and that's why, that's why the, these uh, brothers don't really want to help us because they just feel lost because they got no blue card, or they're frightened they might go back to jail if there's, if they're seen talking to young people. Okay. So. You, you've spoken, um, you know, about some of the mainstream organisations where things aren't happening. Do you? Have you seen, or from your experience, both of you, have you seen or heard of programs that do work? 
maybe not in, could be in this community, could be in another community? Um, be honest with you, no. No, yeah. Um, I mean, as in men's groups. Yeah. I, no, I don't. Yeah, that's all right. So domestic violence is, a, is at the moment is a big big thing because mm. you know there's more more mothers going to jail or being locked up now. Mm. That's what I found when I was doing the watch house. Why now? What? Um, probably that's long overdue that they're starting to defend themselves. Um, and, and look, we just have a thing in the men's group. And how we talk, how we talk in the men's group. Whatever you do, don't come here skiding about men's group, uh, domestic violence, um, because you can't talk about the really talk about domestic violence in the men's group, because there's a room full of black fellas, and there's 30 or 40 of you. The cousin, blonk, brother, belong to that lady that you're living with might be sitting there. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we're very careful with the domestic violence, um, yeah. especially with. Um, um, you know, not saying who they are, and, but it's uh, the domestic violence is the main problem. Before we used to talk about crime, you know, stealing or assaults and that, but it's just domestic violence. Uh, and with the cultural thing on, when they're getting ordered to go to different places, it don't work. Uh, when they're getting ordered to go to probation and parole, for instance, all of what's happening there is there's anger being caused because you have, um, like we were talking about the juveniles, young, you know, you have wrong people asking questions about culture. You know, like the, all the boys from up the Gulf and that. And you have someone from the city here asking questions about what they do in that community and they know nothing about it. That's what causes a big friction. And that's why these guys, a lot of them that are um, breaching all the time because that same thing. Mm -hmm. I've yet to. Oh well, yeah, no one's ever said haven't been told me that they. Well, they, everyone tells you your program's working, but you know it's not. That's how I see it anyway. Thank you. Any further questions, Mr. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Let's see if there's any comments from the floor. It, it sounds like we have a. Could you state your name for the record once the microphone comes over? Well, we Ian Pack, <coughs> Ian Pack, uh, I'm an ex-prison chaplain. I uh, put in one of the submissions for you. Particularly interested in the red dust healing because I can remember hearing about this red dust healing back in uh, Sharing Hope Conference back a good 10 years ago. And I was particularly excited when I heard about it because it, to me it dealt with the issue that I thought was a major issue, uh, particularly with men, the, the rite of passage which didn't appear to be, and they were dealing with uh, prov provider protector uh, roles, which I th <coughs> thought, yes, <coughs> culturally, and I, with respect, the whole concept of respect is the underpins all of this stuff. And it was something when I saw, yes, it's something that specifically needs to happen with Indigenous people, but it's something that goes past the culture of Indigenous people. All men need to understand what that rite of passage is and to see how to become. Um, responsible people and not come back into jail and stuff like that. So when I'm listening and the, the excitement that I had when I heard it, and I'm just wondering how it didn't uh, capture uh, I, the, the, the wider concept of its potential in dealing with the, um, the problems about people going to jail without that rite of passage, the rite of responsibility, uh, respect, all of those issues. Um, and then thinking that in one sense productivity is prevention, is there any way of bringing the concepts specifically within the red dust healing back prior to, you know, as a preventative thing rather than things, but seeing how that the concepts within the red dust healing pro program could be expanded. Um, so that's my question. <coughs> Uh, yeah, the, uh, the nephew and uh, another guy in 
uh, New South Wales produced that program Fantastic. and uh, they put it together and they first trialled it at Cleveland oh, Youth yeah. Detention yeah. Yeah. before it sort of started to take take shape. Right. Mm. It's terrific. And it's been going for, yeah, I think uh, 2008 or something. Very successfully. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's good to hear. Concert, yes. <laughs> yeah. Any I, other? I, I don't know if it's come out. You know, the, the potential just don't want to read this. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's on the regular. We can now, acquire so. that. Yeah. We can trace that up in terms of the department. Find Any it. other comments from the floor? So I guess it's all about the tools you use in the red dust. Mm. That's yeah. right. You yeah. know, and that's why we that's why we teach it. Yeah. You must use the tools. Um, Thank you. Comment from the front row. It's Briggins, just a community member and um, prison chaplain. Um, men's groups and women's groups are really great and we really uh, get a lot of feedback from the, the people I speak to about it. But a couple of the comments that were made by individuals was that um, it's great to have the men's group and it's great to have the women's group, but he said, for us to really move forward and get on top of this domestic violence we were talking about at the time, we really need a group, a combined group, not just uh, this people talking about this aspect of it and this other group talking about the other aspect of it. We need a group, one, one group, to work on this particular problem, you know? I was just wondering what, you know, um, is that possible or um, is there a way forward with something like that? Yeah, there is. It's, um, when we go back to that word culture again, <clears throat> and you see how that's got men's group there? I also, well, Brad, Uncle Brad and I, we deal with a lot of, lot of um, women also, one on one, or, and, uh, and through the red dust. And I get a growl all the time from some of the some of the ladies that come and see me. They say, "Here, can't you put W O in front of that?" <laughs> I say, "No, don't be silly." They say, "Why? What you're doing for my man is working, and I'm worse than him." Mm. See, and that's why they want me to they want me to run a woman's group also, and I say, "I'm culturally, I'm not allowed to." Mm. But I said, if you've got three or four years, nothing wrong with inviting me. But uh, uh, Uncle Brad and I, we do work at uh, uh, Grindle and Dale Parker, where there's men and women there. So, but it would be good if we could have a combined, um, combined thing. Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the culture don't see it that way. The men's business is men's business. Yeah. Women's business is women's business. Yeah, and so that's that. that's your breakdown, mm. and that's why many times, even we've said in Red Dust, by right, teaching you that we have to help our men first before they can help their women, and that's been our focus too. Um, so they can rebuild their families again. It took a lot of sense, guys. It's interesting. Any other comments from the floor, Matt? I think we've got a couple. Um, Uncle Alfred, uh, just back to you, um, I was just thinking about, um, when we're talking cross-culturally, um, oh, actually, I'm just trying to think, uh, actually, I've lost the point there, but I, I was trying to work out um, how uh, you could feed back to uh, people like the Commission here, how do we... Um, break down the barriers. It's culture and things, and I touched on that a little bit with red dust healing is something that, that concept of provider protector things. But uh, I, I know what it was about. When people, the motivation for what they're doing there, if it's all about money, I can well understand your, you know, horror uh, about, you know, uh, what's their motivations? Mm. And how do we, how would you address somebody like these people if that's the issue how can somebody like these people, if money's the driving factor that, and, and it's not appropriate, how would you suggest to these people to try and bring a, 
uh, people with integrity the right attitudes. <coughs> it's a fair comment, I think. <coughs> but what we're seeing today, we're seeing a high level of integrity in none of Absolutely. And I don't know if absolutely respect on that. Yeah. But you've got a problem. How are you going to address it? <laughs> well, that's a, it's a really good question. I'm not sure I have any answers today. And I'm, I'm not sure about Commissioner Fredericks, but it's... Uh, it's certainly been well put, and I think we've heard loud and clear. Mm. That it's and, an issue. And, and that's why I was so glad when I knew that there was going to be two commissioners here today, because I was going to be firing them questions off you later. At the later <laughs> anyway, but uh, but as I said, it's all about that honesty and yeah. truth and trust. Oh. And uh, it's just that it's um, I know where my passion is. Yeah. But if I'm talking to somebody else, I, look, I get, I've been called a therapist and an analyst, and I don't hold certificates. And I tell them, I say, listen, you white people give me them names. I, I, I got them named from the courthouse. Uncle Alfred Mendegroup got a name from a magistrate up in the courthouse. I didn't name myself a Mendegroup. Yeah. And uh, nobody knew me as Uncle Alfred. Ask any um, local person, um, nobody knew, even knew my name was Alfred. My name is Bimba. <laughs> that was from a song that Jim Reeves made. And uh, my grandfather gave me that name, but also I also have a skin name, which is Munda Baranga Bama, which means snake skin man. See, this is where a lot of people, um, you know, when you go back to the cultural side of it, Nobody knew me as Alfred Small, even when I was playing football. I signed the team sheet as Alfred Small, but everybody knew me as Bimbo on the field. Yep, yep. So, um, and I guess that's where it's, um, look, it's a role that you have to play. Yep. And that's where my passion is. And that would have been one of the questions I'd be asking you. Can you give me some idea how I can go about getting funding for the men's group and the art space that um, that the art space that's been given to um, Uncle Alfred Men's Group, uh, and the name of that is Binju Wajithalgari, which means a safe place to come or a safe place to gather. Good name. So uh, mm. um, we don't have funding answers for you today, but you put the issue fairly on the table, and uh, we'll. You we will see if we can provide some assistance going forward. Mm, Thank you. Gentlemen, that's a great place to finish on Thank that you. keynote of integrity and, and the work you've done. Um, can I ask you a question? Oh, please. Uh, comment. Comment. <laughs> Can't ask a question, but you can comment. Make, make a comment and we'll make see how comment. we go with it. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, I'll just identify myself. Uh, Linda Janetsky. I'm a retired Queensland Police Liaison Officer. Okay, and I've been with the police service from 93 until 2016. So I'm pretty well versed in what's been going on because I, in my job it was pretty stressful. Yeah. Dealing with the same people that we're talking about. I don't know how many meetings I'd been to over many years. Yep. I've also been involved with our local Townsville Community Justice Group, of which I'm still a part of. And I've heard these same things all the time and what Uncle has said. Yep. I've been to many meetings where the moment there's funding going to be available, put out, you've got every Tom, Dick and Harry who comes to these meetings. And then in the job that I was in, we'd see it go to a mainstream organisation. And then through those times then, it'd be up to us, because we were always called first, PLOs to deal with situations that could have been dealt with in, in other ways. But because of funding and people are so greedy, and I'm going to put it straight, greedy for funding, okay, that they don't offer services like they should be doing. We know culturally that it doesn't fit the bill. The group that we're compared with, our Townsville community group, again, we have to prove who we are over that because we've got a lot of our people and I've seen it all they've suicided, they've died they know how to play the system to go and get a, a uh, room back in the, the big house 
okay, and all these things that should be offered so that they have a better life. Our people that are in our community justice group, which is Uncle El, Uncle over here, I was going to say Albert, but um, we have seen him struggle trying to fulfil his passion. Not only him, but there's been other people in our organisations that have died because they carry the stress. This is another thing that's unseen. Because when we live in community like we do here, it's just not a nine to five job. Because people know where you live or they'll ask you, can you help us here? So that's another extra burden. So we need to have adequate funding for whatever's going on. The thing is, how do we do it, like Uncle says? What is the guarantee that we will get something? All our funding goes through Department of uh, Justice. And we've got very good relationships with people there. But somehow or other, it misses out. And it's, 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 not a, it's not a good sign. But I just want to, you know, sort of let you know on the overview, a review, that you've got bunches of people here who are elders long gone up at Murray Court. They've died, gone, because of the stress of wanting to help the juveniles. They've sacrificed their own family. We as a community justice group used to give them enough money so that they'd have meals through the day. Knowing that they can't have too much because of their pension. So there's always blockages somewhere along. And then for crying out loud, we have to prove who we are. If we go and ask for a loan somewhere or a house, what, what nationality are you? We've got to sign, a, sign an Aboriginal form to say who we are. All these other little things sort of play up in our systems. They come against us, and then you see the mainstream can get things just like that, and they don't give an account. You see them with cars, driving here, driving there. Our group, our community justice group's coming up for a new car shortly. We've got to watch everything that goes on. So I just want to sort of ask, how do we go about making sure that, that the community justice group, people in this area here, get enough funding? You know, to, for the way we stand, we say, and this is your federal government gives a lot of aid overseas, yet they can't look after their own people. And we'd like to know, you know, or I'd like to know, what can you guys do in helping us. I know, I don't know if you have access to the Premier. Who knows? I don't know. We, we, have, we have good access to government. They're asking us for a series of recommendations that can make things better. You've put that very powerfully. We, we've caught you on video. We hear you. We know how difficult it is. I'll probably go to jail next week for speaking out. <laughs> no, you won't. You've done, you've done well, as have our two friends here. So, thank you. We, we hope from the input you've given us and others today, that we can help you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the work you do, um, Aunty Linda, and thank you, Aunty Bimbo, Uncle Bimbo. <laughs> I know you as that from your sister, Aunty Grace. Oh, OK. <laughs> so now I just worked that out, so thank you. Um, and right. thank you for Bradley as well, for yeah. the work that he's doing as well. And oh, look, and just before I go, that's, that's one of the reasons I wanted to ask, with that cultural mentoring, yeah. with all the funding going to mainstream and um, that's why I wanted to, there was a question I wanted to ask or who would have known, who are the cultural mentors up in that courthouse? Um, all as I heard was Yinda today. There were no other cultural mentors here, so was there funding going to these organisations now for cultural mentors? We, we don't know that. We can't, mm. we, we don't know in terms of that, but we can possibly, it might be in documentation we have back at the office yeah. because in terms of what you know, comes into the community it may not identify individuals hmm. it may only identify organizations but it's, yeah. a, it's a fair question it's, yeah. it's a fair question to ask i think i don't blame you for asking at all look that that brings proceedings today to a close thank you everybody this has been a it, it's been a privilege to be associated with today's session and thank you commissioner fredericks and uh, i'd like to thank everybody for the contribution